It's really refreshing when you finally get a new space game that doesn't try to do everything. It just picks a lane and drives it home. And in my opinion, that's exactly what Star Trucker does, and does quite well. It's not your serious type of space game if you haven't figured that one out by now. And future tech aside, I could list a couple of dozen things wrong with designing spaceships like a truck cab with thrusters only on the bottom. But that's what we've got, and hell, why not? Games are here to be fun, right? But don't let the trucker vibes fool you, we're still going to have to deal with plenty of space-based issues from hull breaches, spacewalks, power management and more. Good day to you my friends and welcome, I'm Kenneth and today we are of course having a ganders at Star Trucker. The demo for this has dropped for Steam Next Fest and it's been developed by Monster and Monster. This video will be a quick overview of the gameplay and content within the demo and I'll leave the playthrough to yourself if you want to go check it out. The demo kicks off with your rig broken down but thankfully not drifting off into space. And it wastes no time introducing how things work in the game, everything is a simple click to interact. It shows off spacewalking and patching up your ship, and you are back on your way to make your first delivery drop off. I like how weighty the truck feels, it's slow to speed up, sluggish to turn, and this completely changes after you drop off that trailer, a fly off to get your next job. And this is where exploring your cockpit comes in handy, as the screens either side of you can be switched between various statuses as well as cameras that are around your rig. With this found, reversing into the station to dock as well as picking up new cargo is a lot easier. You can and should use these cameras to make sure your trailer is clear of the docks when leaving too. Nothing like pulling away and veering off to any which way to aim for your destination and smashing your cargo. You'll want to avoid that by the way, because you will be fined. Taking a bit of time to look around the ship and we have a bed with an empty pinboard, some spares cargo and lots of little cubby holes and interactables. It won't take you long to find that each system has its own fuse and or power core and damage can and will trip on these fuses. This could be just a single system or even trip them all if the core power goes down and that means your gravity will go down too so you'll be floating around your cab. And while fun, it's not very optimal for getting around even if it is a small space. That being said, it feels like there is a few options for saving power and fuel if you really wanted to optimise your playthrough. No gravity means one less fuel rod to change, and turning off the lights and turning down heating could also save on power, as well as shutting off the driver assist. Above the window there are further manual controls in addition to the warp jump lever for shutting off each or both engines, engine chokes for both, a radar ping which doubles as a horn, shutters to seal off your windows, as well as both a music radio and a CB radio for in-game dialogue. All these manual switches are great indicators of future or advanced gameplay that will make use of them. Star systems that are either extreme cold or hot you may just need to adjust your rig for. Maybe a route takes you too close to the sun you need to close your window shields, or maybe a heavy debris patch that you don't want to smash your windows. Because it is entirely possible that you can drive your rig using just the cameras on your dashboard screens. It's like playing a game within the game, so I look forward to the challenges that will come from this. Some of these challenges are hinted at in the tech tree from levelling up. At first it's just split into quick or fragile loads, which represent the two ends of the job range, from fast and risky to safe and sound. The full game will bring a lot more options later on, including perishable, hazardous, valuable, heavy, oversized and long distance hauls, and you'll be able to build your skill tree around the playstyle you want to do. Another good hint for the future of this game is the systems map. Now while the demo is of course quite limited, the main game looks to have quite a variety of systems and territories, and that's before we get into possible story elements or a reputation system if they have one. One last thing the demo does let you do as well is customise the paint scheme on the rig, with not just colours but patterns too, which can be unlocked by fulfilling different requirements. While I would have preferred to see a full colour selector here, it still has plenty of options and I look forward to seeing what patterns and collective challenges we have come launch day. So follow the link in the description or look up Star Trucker on Steam and give the demo a blast. I'm really looking forward to the release of this one since I tried a shorter demo of this at Eurogamer Expo here in London, so please do let me know your thoughts below. Currently the game doesn't have its own discord but you can talk about the game on the publishers discord so I'll drop a link to Raw Fury's discord in the description as well. 
And while we don't have an exact date for full release, I'll definitely be covering this one more in the future. So subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Kenator out.